Thank you to the workshop family. Good to see you. Always great meeting you guys. And I guess that's what, uh, you know, the church is. It's a community of believers. Um, we're family. Come on, we're family. And that's what Pastor Brett says. I love that. I love when churches come into our area and we can actually celebrate that. Come in, how, how many tired of like just people just fighting with you and you're just trying to like, like don't we need just a little bit of peace and a bit of unity? And I feel like that's what the body of Christ needs to be now more than ever in this time. And so you guys look good. You, you come in out of a lockdown. You guys are looking good. You guys are bringing you greetings from GC and like Pastor Brett says, we're just up the road. My mom and my dad uh, planted a church here about 30 years ago and last year I uh, stepped into leadership and uh, man, it's been a journey. It's been a journey. God, I, I, I had to realize how uh, honored I must be to be in that position knowing that God knew COVID was coming. Uh, but God graced us because <laughs> it wasn't easy leading through a, a season. But I feel like God brought, me a me brought you a message and He brought it to me in the week because I gave this to our church. That somehow through lockdown, our expectation of what God can do has decreased. And so without further delay, can I get into God's word? And I just want, I want to thank Pastor Brett and, uh, and Kim for allowing me, like he says, I, as, as a leader of a community, you don't let anybody stand here. And so I, I value this every time, every opportunity, even in our own church. But I want to turn your attention to Ephesians chapter 2. And I want you to receive this for yourself. Thank you to the worship team. Oh, you guys are incredible. Come on, can we give the worship team? Come on, can we just honor them? They were here early. And uh, I, I believe God's going to give you a word today. And Pastor Brett, I did bring notes today, so don't <laughs> I did bring notes just so that I really, I want to say, I've got, a, I've got a full heart this morning. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, it says, this is Paul's words to the church in Ephesus, and he's, he writes this and he says, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. Come on, you gotta, you gotta get happy about that. Even when we were dead, it is by grace you have been saved and God raised us up with Christ. Come on, just let that sink. God raised us up with Christ. Wait, wait, it gets better. And he seated us. Oh, he, he made a seat available with us in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Come on, that's a verse. That's a verse to go back to every single day of your life to show you where you are positioned. If you follow Jesus, if you love Jesus, if you consider him your savior, this verse is for you, that he raised you up in Christ Jesus. He took you out of a dead place. You, you, some, of, some of us has gotten into a space where we have dumbed down our salvation let me tell you, you were dead in your sin, but Jesus Christ raised you up and he seated you in heavenly places. So, so tell someone next to you socially distant, say, give me some space. I'm in heavenly places. I mean, I'm in heavenly places. And too many times we have lowered the expectation that God wants, he wants us to have within our hearts. We've lowered it. And so today, my, my message is simple. My message is so simple. I want to speak on lifting my expectations. As Pastor Brett just said, now where two or three are gathered. Now I've been, I've been wrestling with that scripture. I've been, I've been uh, we as a church, we've gone into a different direction. And we've been changing language about mobilizing the church. That church is no longer a location. It was never a location to start with. It was always a group of people. The word we've always been looking for is temple. By the way, we're looking for the word temple. It's not church. Church is ecclesia. It's the ones that are called out, that the ones that gathered together. And the word of God says when two or three gathered, he shows up. The, the level of expectation in your heart for God's presence is the measure you will receive and experience him. Do you know that? You can stand in the same room and don't feel God because you are just not, you, you're not expecting but you have someone right next to you shouting out loud, lifting up a praise to God and experiencing God because it's never about feelings, nor it's about goosebumps. It's about expectation. 
Come on, look, look, tell yourself, say, I'm lifting my expectation. I'm lifting my, come on, if you're watching online, this is, this is the weird part now. We, 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 the church is, we're talking to real people, and then we're talking to real people, but through a lens. <laughs> and I want to say to everybody watching online as well, lift wherever you're watching. If you're watching this in the week, lift your expectation. I'm lifting my expectation. Father God, I pray that you would be with us. Use your word. Use my average words, God. Help me to articulate what you have given me. Change, challenge, comfort, God. And I pray, God, that you would move us into a different space as believers to believe that you have more for us. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody that believes that says, amen, amen, amen. amen. Expectation. It's a word we, we often don't think about, yet we have expectations. Are you guys married? Are you married? So you guys have expectation as a couple or for one another. You expect him to make your coffee in bed. There's an expectation. <laughs> there's an expectation. And, and, and let me tell you, there, there's some that are healthy. Like we've got good expectations. The Bible gives some clear, especially if we're speaking in a marriage sense or even in relating to people and being Christ follower. But then we've got some unhealthy ones. Come on, the ones that torment you, the ones that cause disappointment, the ones that oftentimes, and we find it not only in our homes, in our relationship, we even find it in church. Do you know some people believe that there's an expectation that in church you are not going to get hurt, offended, rubbed the wrong way? Okay, cool. Just take a two seconds, look around the room. Who's in the room? Human beings. Human beings will destroy your expectations so badly. And it's something we wrestle with. And so I looked up, I went to Google and I asked Google, what, is, what does expectation mean? Expectation means a strong belief that something will happen or be the case. And so I read that. And what I got was, what I believe is what I expect. Your, your belief system will determine your expectation and the level of it. Now, you know where I'm going with this. Because what, who you believe is your God should set your expectation. Now, I'm, I'm, I, I'm starting to feel a little bit awkward because there was moments where I first panicked instead of prayed. I first went into anxiety instead of getting before the Father. We have a saying in our church that we praise our first response, not our last resort. Because my expectation... My belief determines my expectation that though I go through a valley, that He will be with me. Though I face some opposition, I, I, God is my, my, sh my shepherd, he's, and I lack nothing. So what I expect, what I believe determines my expectation, and the level of your expectation will determine your direction. And so I'm, I, I'm, I'm, uh, it sounds pretty, but it's, it's, it's really, it's truth. Because Jesus, is, He's left the earth, and I want to show you this passage in Acts. He's left the earth. The disciples were always discouraged because Jesus was just wrecking their expectation. Just some, just some theological lesson that the Judaic culture taught them that Jesus was their, their Savior, their Messiah is going to come with a sword. They, they, he's going to rule over as an as a, as a actual government on this earth. But he flipped the script. He destroyed their expectation. In fact, Peter tried to stop him when he said, I'm going to the cross. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, because he knew where he was going. So his belief about who he was, that he, the Father approved him and gave him a mission to go to the cross. Nothing was going to stop him because of his belief, determined his expectation, determined his direction. And so we, we, we see in Jesus throughout Scripture, he was unmoved by people's expectation. But it, but it was rooted in who he was. Because here's the thing. I've been telling our church the this, this statement. I want you to catch it. Just, it's not in, in the notes. It's not really part of this. But just a side note. Before God calls you, he sees you. So a lot of our, our belief system, is, and especially the unhealthy part within our faith, has revolved around our lack of identity in who we are in the sight of God. Now I come to remind you what Paul says in, Ephes in, in Ephesians 2, that you are the righteousness of God, that you are seated in heavenly places, that, that if you believe that Jesus is inside of your heart, He raised you up. There should be a new level of expectation coming up inside of you. 
And so these disciples, they, they were getting disappointed, man. They, they were like, you not who, you, <laughs> who, you, who we thought you were going to be. And he goes and he, he, does his, he does what he does best. And he just, you know, exceeds our expectation. He doesn't think like us. He doesn't. No mind can understand the thoughts of God. And so he goes to the cross and God raises He's resurrected and he says to the disciples, now I need you to wait in the upper room. So you play, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to send someone that's better. Because oftentimes we want to keep people. We, we, we want to, you know, and we, we, we can relate so quickly that we can say our church is our people. No, it's God's people. <laughs> it's God's people. So this, this, this is why I can celebrate churches and not feel I can be more in unity because I know God will fill the, the, bring the right people to the right house the spirit calls because I know whose I am when he called me he first saw me he first saw you before you were even in your mother's womb he saw you and then he called you and so, so he's saying wait in the upper room I'm, I'm, I'm leaving you I know it's not what you expected I know you were, you were depressed you, 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 you were so confused right now but I need you to understand get a belief trust me believe I might have sent someone better. They get, in, they get into the room. And I, I was thinking about this, and God gave, gave it to me just right now, that when they received the Holy Spirit, it was more linked to their expectation than anything else. Some of you have been limiting what God can do through your life. You, some of you think you need to be this level of holiness to receive the Holy Spirit. No, he says, whoever seeks me will find me. When, 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 you, when you raise your expectation, God's saying, I'm gonna, I show up. I'm there. I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you. So he says, wait in that upper room. Wait, I'm about to send. And then, then you're gonna, I'm going to do something with you you didn't expect. And, and the Holy Spirit comes down on the day of Pentecost and fills him and they begin to speak in tongues and, and people are from other languages and, and tribes are like, how are they speaking in our language? Because the first sign of the Holy Spirit is unity. He, he, he creates a connection. He, 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 he started forming the church. He done what they didn't expect. They thought it was only going to come through the Jewish people. But now he's reaching all of these different cultures and beliefs. But then we get to a passage after, and I want you to jump into Acts chapter 3. The church has started, it's thriving, Peter's leading, and it's going beautiful. And this is the passage right after, that you know so familiar if you've been in church long enough, where the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They broke bread, they were in homes, they were in small groups, they're doing life together. But then one day, the Bible says in Acts chapter 3, it says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple. Come on, say it, say, say it, say it with me. Going up. They're going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. So what I want to do now is I want to make my way through this and show you why you need to lift your expectation and why Paul's encouragement to the church of Ephesus was so needed because they were under a lot of pressure. But Peter knew about this. So the Bible says that one day they were going up to the temple. They had a direction. They knew where they were going. Now, in that day, they would have gone about three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. This was a normal thing to these men. Peter and John, they would do this. They would go up to the temple and pray. It was part of the Judaic culture. They would do this all the time. Kind of like you go to work every day. You do the same thing. You wake up the kiddies. You make breakfast. You drink your coffee. You do the same thing. You, 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 you come to church. It, it's the mundane of life. And when I was reading that, I couldn't move past it without God telling me that the mundane of life is the danger to our expectation that we've walked through days having such a low expectation of what God can do through you and you've missed what he wanted to do all along. Now this is so practical because I want you to walk into your Monday and stop calling it the Monday blues and walk in knowing it's a Monday 
Miracle Monday. It, it, it's a Monday that with a difference. It's a Monday that, 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 that I, I, I've always been looking at and dumbing down. So you, it's not just another day. We like saying that. It's just another day. I wake up. In fact, you don't even think half of the things you do. You just do it. <laughs> Come on. You just, you just do it. You just walk to the car. You, you hardly think. I think it was the other day I was like driving. And, and I, I, I normally when I come, come and I'm driving or I have my certain routes, like I thought about that there. I'm like, how much thought did I give into driving? Like I didn't. Because you just, you just know. You turn left. Yeah, you just, you just do it. And it's the mundane. And it's become the danger in the church to our level of expectation. Because now we're waiting for a special moment. We're waiting for these big things. But God's saying, go up. Go up. L lift your expectation. Peter, Peter, them, they, they were going up. The man was carried. But Peter and John, were, they were going up. They were going up. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm stretching the text here, but I'm saying, l lift up. Lift up your, your Mondays. Lift up your Tuesdays. Saying, God, you're going to show up in my Tuesday, in my Wednesday, in my Thursday, in my Friday. God, you're going to show up. Well, if you want God, we just sang about it. We want, if you want to be available to God, you best be available on a Monday. On a Tuesday, you don't know. Because we've reserved God's miracles for a Sunday. But let me tell you, God wants to do whenever He wants to do it. All we need to do is just expect it. So we've walked past and this man was carried there every day. How many times was the believers just walking by, just walking by. We're walking past uh, people that God is wanting us to speak into. But here's, here's the thing. We don't even give God time in the morning. We don't expect, like, like we, we only open up our Bible when we feel like we're in despair. And when we... Hey, there's a, there's, that's, the, that's the truth. That's the truth right there. As I, when the amen stop, I know that's when I'm on the money. <laughs> then I know. But it's, it's the truth. And I have to live it out. Pastor Brad has to live it out. If we want to walk in the fullness of God, if we want to walk in, in a high level of expectation, I need a word from God. Peter, Peter and John had a word from God that day. And they said, we're going up. We're going up to the temple. I don't know what your temple is on a Monday. But I've, I've read a passage in, 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 in Corinthians where he says, you are now the temple of God. The Spirit of God dwells within you. So you, you no longer needed to go to a place. You are the place. You are the miracle carriers. You are the vessel of God. <laughs> Go into your Monday with expectation, man. God, you're going to use me. I know. I'm not going to get irritated by that colleague that keeps bugging me when she's going through some marital issues and she's complaining about her husband. But I got a word from God inside of me. I'm not going to shrug off those things in my life. See, see we've, we've categorized when God can use us, how God can use us. But it, it, all it's doing is it's lowering my expectation in my mundane. So I, I'm, I'm seeing my week now. And I'm waking up. God, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? I'm not even out of the house yet. My Bible's open. God, what do you want to do? Show me. Speak to me. Give me a word. Fill me up. See, I, I, can't, I can't walk around empty, God. I, I need something to fill me, to give. And so, don't let the mundane kill your level of expectation. Don't let it be another day. Let it be the day. I'm reminded of that scripture. I don't know who said it. Was it David that said, this is the day that the Lord has made. Is that even a scripture? And now we'll rejoice and be glad. This is the day. This is the day. Not tomorrow, not Sunday. Now. Amen, my sister. Today is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And so we do online church just like you guys do. And obviously being six months into lockdown, it can become a norm. Just like you showing up to the building, become a norm. And last week, Sunday, it was just another Sunday for us. You know, we said just an another Sunday. Same thing, 9 a.m., we're on. I see there, cool, I know that number. That's how many I told our church. I see if it drops down, I know one of y'all skipping out on church. <laughs> I'm checking out, watch you. <laughs> Making sure the flock is healthy. They're eating from God's word. And that number was... I think particularly lower the viewing, the people online. And it's just another Sunday. And somehow I've allowed my context 
to determine my expectation. Because that's what the mundane does. That's what the familiarity breeds contentment. So I, I, why would I need to give in to something? Why would I need to expect something higher when I've been doing this and it's been looking the same? And last week Sunday, my sister got a message on Facebook from a high school teacher. And she says, I just watched your 9 a.m. service. And I was incredibly blessed. felt the Holy Spirit move. And I needed what, what your brother shared. And man, it, it, it's blessing me. And they, they had a chat. And she says, thank you so much, love, all the way from Taiwan. Now you tell me that it's just not another Sunday. You, 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 we, we've got to understand that God wants to show up right in the middle of our mundane. Don't allow the context of what we see and, and particular eyes to determine the level of expectation. Leave your house expecting. But it goes on. Is this good? Is this helping someone? Is this helping someone? Pastor Brett, I hope this mobilizes the workshop. Man, you guys are, if this group of people can just decide right now, tomorrow it's going to be the day. Woo. When he saw, this is verse 3, when he saw Peter and John, this is the main, layman, and John about to enter, he asked them for money. And Peter looked straight at him, and as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Look at us. So, so just, just see this. Just, just picture this for a moment. This man is at this gate where he's always been every day. He's lame. He's there. And Peter and John comes in, and he shouts. They, they probably didn't see him yet. And they, he asks them, gets their attention. But then Peter says, look at us, which made me see that his head was down because oftentimes when you're in a shameful place when, when you're feeling low in your expectation your head's always down you, 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 you cannot make eye contact, in fact I've done some research to make eye contact requires the same part of your brain to, make, to come up with words, that's how people have to like drift off your eyes a bit so it, it, it takes effort it takes, it, takes, it takes effort to make eye contact and so this man couldn't make eye contact, but Peter says, look at us. So I don't know where this man was in his expectation. I just knew he, he wanted some money. That's all he expected. Lame from birth, carried every day, and his level of expectation is change. All he's one is his change. Peter says back, look at us. Can I go one level deeper? Peter says, look at us. The original text for that look at us phrase means to see something physical with spiritual. When Peter said, look at us, he, what Peter was saying is, look at what God can do through broken people. Look at me. I was a fisherman. I was cussing and I was cutting people's ears off. But look at me now. Look at me now. Do you want to raise your expectation? I know you down there. I know you down there. But look at us. Look what God can do through me. Look at what God can do through me as a human being. And I've come to tell you and remind you that God has seated you in heavenly places. That you are anointed, you called. God has put you here for a purpose. God has given you everything you need. And this man just wanted change. Paul says, look at us. Peter said, look at us. Look at us. Look, look, look what God could do. Look at us. We, 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 we are the church of God. Our Savior Jesus left, but the Holy Spirit has come. Look at us. What you see is a result of what God done with inside of me. It's a new level of expectation. Now watch this. And he goes on and he says, Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have. But what I do give to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. 
your expectation over your life has been lame. <laughs> Look at someone say, you're so lame, man. <laughs> Just kidding. You've lowered it. I don't know who this is for. But you've been thinking that God has to first get you to that place before he can use you. Get to that spiritual level. And then he can use you. Now he'll make you play prophetically. I didn't get your name. Noah, Noah, our beautiful name. Noah, when you're playing, don't underestimate what God can do through, you, through, the, through the gift God has given you. Don't underestimate every time you show up. Be present. Say, God, use me. Use me. I, I'm your vessel. And I've, I've thought about why we, we walk around thinking that we can't be used by God to impact people around us, in our workplace, our families, whatever it is, the, the, the normal. And when I was reading this text, in verse 5 it says, So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. We know what he was expecting. Money. We have lowered our expectation of what we can mean for people because we do not have what they want. But you got what they need. You, you got what they we We've stopped being available because people want affirmation, attention, everything that keeps them down here. I'm sorry for the camera guy now, but I want to show this. That man is here. That man is on this place. And all he wants is change. That's not what he needs. It's what he wants. It's what he's there every day. The rejection has caused you to be in this place. The potential that you see that God can use you in is at this place because of what had happened in the past. The addiction you're still in. The thing you still struggle with. Keeps you here. Keeps you stuck. Keeps you in a cycle. Because he keeps getting what he wants. He keeps getting chains. One scholar even said, this is a businessman. This is his business. This is what he keeps doing. The business of stuck. The business of lame, low expectation. And maybe you, yeah. Maybe you in this place. Maybe you the lame man. Maybe internally, how you show up to your prayer life, how you go to God. Maybe it's just to get through another day. Maybe it's, it's like, if only I can just get that, God. That's what I, that, that's what I want. But don't allow what you want to miss what you need. And Peter says, look at us. I thought I thought, I thought I needed the physical Jesus here with me. I didn't know I needed the Holy Spirit all along. I didn't know that God could use me like this. I was just a fisherman. I was pretty good at fishing. But when the Savior called Jesus, called me off the boat. I didn't know. They didn't know what they were getting themselves into. God had to keep reaffirming who they are, who they are, who they are. Because He first sees you before He calls you. And so now you're stuck here. And Peter looks at the man. He says, look at us. Silver or gold I do not have. He was willing to admit to not have what they want. But he says, what I, what I got, <laughs> what I got, I've come to announce to the workshop family on this Sunday, you got what you need, you got what you need, you got what you need to raise the family, Pastor Brad, you got what you need to, to lead this church, you got what you need to lead the worship team, you got what you need to be God's vessel. There's so many scriptures I can give you. Do you know about the lady that lost her husband in 2 Kings 4? She needed money to pay off her debtors. And Elijah says, what, what, do you, what do you need me to do? What, what, what do you want? What do you have? You want oil. 
What you really need is jars. You need to be the vessel of God. You are not the oil. Go get some jars. Can I tell you about the, the boy in John 6 where he says, oh, I only have five loaves and two fish, but put it in the master's hand and watch me do what I do best. I take broken things. And Peter says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Get up out of your shame. Get up out of your rejection. Get up out of everything that the enemy has lied to you and get up. Raise your expectation. I'm lifting my expectation. I'm lifting it. I'm lifting it every day. Every day when I feel like it's being lowered, I'm saying, God, you have seated me in heavenly places. You have seated me, God. I'm made for more. I'm made for more. I'm made for more. You're made for more. You're made for more. You're made for more. Come on. I want to say till you get it in your I'm a redundant preacher. I'll, I'll say it. You are made for more. You are made for more. Don't limit what God can do through your life because of the level of expectation rooted from the belief that God is out to get you. That God is disappointed with you do you know how much he loves you do you know what he done for you can i can i go back can i can i go back he says it is by grace you have been saved and god has raised us up he's given you a new level a new position you're no longer the old stop living in the old the old looks lame Come on, look at your neighbor and say, the old looks lame. Put that in the chat if you watch it online. The old looks lame. It's lame, man. What Jesus done for you is more than enough. He said on that cross to tell us that it's finished. It's done. I paid it all. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms. In Christ Jesus. Watch this. In order... That in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves. Because I've been carrying expectations, I've lowered my expectations thinking I raised myself up. See, that's what pride does to us. It keeps us stuck in one place, thinking we have to make it happen. But he says it's, it's, it's in Christ. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. I just want to make this very clear. Pastor Brett preached last week. We're in a series called Faith. And he says you've got to walk out your faith. But that comes after realization that you have grace on your life. Grace without works is dead. I walk it out now. I don't work for grace. I work from grace. I, 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 I walk it out. God has saved me. Not by works that no one can boast. For we are God's... Now I love this because I thought about the name of the church. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Before you were born, he knew. He set you apart. He gave you a purpose. He gave you a plan. All you need to do, lift your expectation. Get the belief that you are seated in heavenly places. You, you, are, you no longer where you were. You saved. At some point, you've got to believe that you saved. Eh? You, know, you do know that. At some point, you're going to believe I'm the righteous of God. God cleansed me, he saved me, he washed me. Thank you, Jesus. I just need to keep my heart in repentance. I just need to keep asking God for forgiveness for the things that I've done. But I'm saved. Nothing I do will make me more saved. You are saved as can be. So why are you lame on the ground? Break the cycle, the back of condemnation, and receive the free gift of God. And Peter looks at that man. And I love what it says. And they can get it up on the screen. And it goes on. I think it's verse 7. 
just taking him by the right hand. He helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. Go on. Verse 8. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. And then he went with them. Where did he go with them? To the temple courts. To the temple. Walking, jumping, and praising God. I tell you, when God does something into you, no one can stop the praise. No one can stop the joy. No matter what I go through, no matter what I face. If God does something if there's a level of expectation. So Pastor Brett, you have all the right to shout out loud, scare your team a bit, because God has done something in your life. God, if God does something, no one's going to dumb down my praise. Let me tell you that I could have been laying crippled. I could have been laying. I'm not preaching this without any reference to what God has done in my life. Four years ago, I felt like I was here. My dad dropped me off at work. By three o'clock, he had a massive heart attack. Best friend, gone. Not with us anymore. The reality of death, the pain, you have a decision to make in this place. Because life will knock you down sometimes. Life will keep you down on, life will give you a reason to just sit at the gate and beg for what you want to feed the cycle of stuck. I had to make a decision that God is the only giver and taker of life. And my belief that what God does is always good helped me to raise my expectation, to lift up, to stand. And eventually lead the church that my dad was leading. So you tell me. Look at me. God can do something in your life. Don't let the devil lie to you and keep you stuck. God can use death and turn it into something beautiful. He will will change around your life if you raise the expectation. Thank you God. I feel you in this place. Your presence is so evident here. I want to say one, I want to take it one more. The reason why we can't help people is because we need help. And so when you begin to believe who your Savior is and break the cycle and raise your expectation, you can lift people up. Lift people up. God has called me to be a vessel. He's given me a new hope. I don't need to be swayed around the circumstances. God, you've given me a hope, new hope so I can, I can be a hope carrier to people around me. I can lift people up. See, I, I pray and I long for communities of faith. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm believing I've come with a message to the workshop family. Be a community that lifts people up. And says, stop, that, that's, that's, that's not what you, what you need. This is what you need. And I, 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 I'm not talking down to people. I'm, I'm lifting people up. I, I'm, I've got faith inside of me. I'm not saying at that level, but God, I, I'm lifting it up. We need communities that lift people up. We need communities that's pulling people out of darkness into light. We need communities that pulling people out of shame into the free gift of grace. Because the people that we as a church are supposed to minister He's not within the room. That's the gate. Peter found, Peter and John found the man at the gate. That the gate. This is, this is the message that's burning in my heart that we cannot settle for just this. God wants to do something through your life in your Monday, in your Tuesday, in your Wednesday, wherever you find yourself. Be the light. Talk different. Be the righteousness of God. You're seated in heavenly places and God raised you up. That's what He wants to do. That's what He wants to do through your life. Just lift it up. Just lift it up right now. You can stand with me in this place. Just lift up your hands in this place. This is a ministry moment. The Holy Spirit is here. 
Lift the lid of your life. God, here I am. Use me. Breathe. 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 Breathe, Holy Spirit. Refresh hearts. Lift the expectation. God, I decide. I decide, God, to believe that you can do something through my life. I don't need a position. No, I need a mic. God, you give me and you call me where you want me to go. God, you lead me. As your spirit leads, I will follow. I feel God saying right now, That God is wanting you to decide to forgive those that hurt you. That the cycle of unforgiveness is keeping you stuck. And you are unwilling to help other people because you are stuck. You are paralyzed by the hurt and the pain, rehearsing it through. But God is calling you up. He says, I've given you everything you need. You don't need to wait for the right time to forgive that person right now. God's putting that person on your heart right now. You're releasing. You're releasing. God's releasing you right now. You've been rejected. You've been overlooked. You've been hurt. Maybe you've been through some dark seasons. God's saying, lift, lift your expectation. Lift your expectation right, right around this place. Just begin to see yourself seated, seated in heavenly places. You've placed me above God, above everything I've experienced. You've given me a new life, God. Making me a clean heart, God. Purify me, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your presence is here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. to ring over your, your spirit. 
And I'll leave you with this. David penned a song. And it speaks all about expectation. In Psalm 121, he says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? He answers his question. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He, he watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun and the moon will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm lifting my expectation to the hills from whence cometh my help. My expectation is God. And I pray that you are lifting it up. Don't settle. Lift it up. Lift it up. Come on, say that out. Say, I'm lifting it up. I'm lifting it up. I'm lifting it. Come on, shout it out. You got to, you got to. I'm lifting it up. I'm lifting it up.